It's gonna be the focus of uh, today's video, is answering the question, which of these 20, I believe, uh, ironclad common cards are useful to you immediately? Uh, in what situations should you be picking them up early, and in what situations should you be upgrading them? Hey, 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 everyone. Baylor here in the big cozy chair. And today I want to talk common cards, specifically the Ironclad's common cards, and which ones you want to be taking in Act 1 and upgrading. Say it's the very beginning of Act 1. You defeat that stinky jawworm on the first floor and three common cards pop up. Which one do you choose? It's gonna be the focus of uh, today's video, is answering the question, which of these 20, I believe, uh, ironclad common cards are useful to you immediately? Uh, in what situations should you be picking them up early, and in what situations should you be upgrading them? For my kind of uh, evaluation criteria here, I'm going to be analyzing how each of these cards are able to answer the challenges presented to you in Act 1, and evaluating how they improve the starting deck of the Ironclad in its matchup against various Act 1 threats. So let's start right from the top. Anger is a awesome, awesome common card for Ironclad in Act 1. This is a zero cost attack, six additional damage for zero energy, which is pretty much always an increase to the Ironclad's damage output. And you're often playing this alongside or the turn after you've played Bash. So you can often think of this as nine additional damage for zero energy. And I think that's where the, the real power of Anger starts to come in, is that Ironclad has a lot of ways to multiply this damage. If you have any points of strength, then this card can be a, a great addition to the deck. But even right at the start of Act 1, if you have no other cards in the deck, Anger will significantly improve your ability to deal damage. The upgrade on this is only plus 2. So it's not exactly the highest priority upgrade. As I look at the upgrades for each of these cards, by the way, um, I think it's really useful to think of upgrades on cards in Slay the Spire as a absolute increase rather than any kind of percentage increase. So when I look at the Anger upgrade here, this is plus 2 to damage rather than plus 33%. Uh, and if you look at other upgrades alongside that in comparison, it, it becomes very easy to uh, evaluate them relative to one another. So I think Anger is a, a very, very good addition to an Ironclad deck in Act 1, basically all the time. Not a high priority upgrade, and the fact that it duplicates itself will serve you well in fights that add statuses to your deck. So extra useful against Slime Boss, extra useful against Hexaghost, extra useful against the Three Sentries. It's a great card, and you should grab it. Next up, Armaments. Uh, also one that I like quite a bit in Act 1. It's an additional block card, and there's not too many of those in the Ironclad common pool. And it lets you upgrade another card in your hand for the rest of combat. That means that Armaments is often 5 block plus 3 additional block from upgrading a defend, or 3 additional damage from upgrading a strike or other attack card. So when I look at an Act 1 armament site, I look at its numer numerical value as approximately 8. And then that numerical value increases if you draw the upgraded card a second time, which is often not the case in your Act 1 combats, but will be the case against um, bosses. So this card in particular is really good if your Act boss is the Guardian, who's going to ask of you consistent block draws and will be a long enough combat to really benefit from the upgrades. The upgrade on armaments upgrades all the cards in your hand rather than only one card, and this is uh, one of the more intriguing upgrades in Slay the Spire, I think, and definitely the most interesting common card upgrade. I like this upgrade a lot when you have additional card draw of any kind. If you can get more than five cards in your hand, then the upgrade on armaments is very, very good in Act 1. But right at the start of the game, that's often not the case. The way I think about armaments upgrading is that uh, you generally have, you know, three energy and five cards 
So you play the armaments, and then you have two energy remaining to play other cards. Unupgraded armaments can already upgrade one of those two cards, so the upgrade to the armaments is really only upgrading at, like, mostly one additional card that you can play on that turn. If the fight goes on long enough that you start redrawing stuff, this can help a lot against, say, Lagavulin or Sentries, but I think you'll often better find the upgrade spent on something more immediately impactful. So overall, armaments do take, especially against the Guardian. Um, do not upgrade unless you have additional hard draw, is my overall analysis. Body Slam. Body Slam's a tough one in Act 1. This card can do some really cool stuff in the later game, but when you're first offered it, you know, on floor 1, it may not even be an improvement to the starter deck. And by, by improvement to the starter deck, what I mean is that taking Body Slam as the first card from your first combat can result in having a worse combat against your second foe because of the way that this card interacts with your deck. You need to be able to have block when you draw this card in order for it to do anything, and the Ironclad at the start of the game cannot guarantee block draws with only four cards that uh, block four defense in the starting deck out of a total of ten or 11 if you have the Ascender's Bane curse. This effect also gets worse when your opponent adds status cards to your deck, such as the, the Sentries, the boss Hexaghost, or the Slime Boss, which will all make this card even more unreliable because it's even more difficult to draw alongside block. Therefore, I generally don't recommend this as an Act 1 card, but if you do take it, Note that Body Slam has an energy upgrade, reducing the cost from 1 to 0, allowing you to more easily play it alongside other cards and throw it out as a bit of additional free damage. So don't take, but if you have one, do upgrade. Kind of an interesting analysis there. Clash, another one that's really, really variable. Clash also may not be an improvement to the starting deck if you're on High Ascension when there's the Ascender's Bane Curse. Starting at, As at Ascension 10, Ascender's Bane, this unplayable, unremovable curse card, is added to your deck automatically at the start of the run. And that card makes Clash very difficult to play, because you cannot play Clash if you draw it at the same time as Ascender's Bane, or any other, uh, you know, non-attack card. Now, if you're on Ascension 9 or below, and you haven't added any skills to your Ironclad deck, you've only got four defends and then a whole bunch of attacks. Clash then becomes a really amazing addition to the Ironclad starter deck and allows you to do 14 damage or upgraded 18 damage for zero energy, which is absolutely filthy. This card is a steal if, uh, if you can play it reliably, which is the big if. This card also additionally problematic against enemies who add status cards to your deck, like the Slime Boss or like Hexaghost. And you do need to beat those fights if they're if they're uh, present on the map in order to get to the next act. So don't take this card if you're fighting Hexaghost. Don't take this card if you're fighting Slime Boss. But do take this card on Low Ascension if you haven't added any skills to your deck yet, because it absolutely slaps. It's just, unfortunately, very, very difficult to make work reliably otherwise. Cleave! This is a great workhorse common for the Ironclad. Cleave is pretty efficient area of effect damage, and by, by efficient I mean for the energy cost of this card, you get a lot of total damage. Eight per enemy. Area effect damage is very valuable in Act 1, especially in the hard pool combats, the, your fourth and subsequent combat encounters in Act 1 can contain a large number of enemies, such as the five slimes slime gang fight, or the four gremlins. As well as there's also three lies, the three mushrooms event, there's the three centuries elite fight, there's, there's a lot of multi-enemy combats in Act 1, and so a card like Cleave, which can do a high base value of damage, but also scale reasonably with the Ironclad's access to strength, and has a really solid upgrade too of plus three makes this card a really good damage choice in the early game. I give Cleave a do take in Act 1, especially if your boss is Slime Boss, and do upgrade if you have an upgrade to give to it. That 11 damage hit is amazing in the early game, and will continue forward to be great into Act 2. 
Clothesline. This is a fun one. I like Clothesline quite a bit, although it doesn't offer very good damage. You're paying 2 energy for 12 damage, which is the same as 2 strikes. But what Clothesline offers in advantage is that it's a compact, dense card. It's a 2 energy card that does a lot. 12 damage is significant, and 2 turns a weaken is incredibly useful. You can think of weaken in Act 1 as between 3 to 5 block per turn for an enemy that's weakened. Most enemies will weak for 3 or 4, and then bigger enemies like the, the Knob or the Legavulin or various bosses, you can save a little bit more than that. But that's, that's about the value. So this is 2 energy for 12 damage and 6 to 10 block, which is a, a pretty good deal compared to Dash on the Silent, for example. That makes it a pretty solid addition to the starter deck. It'll it'll definitely improve your matchups in most combats in Act 1, the Knob and the Legavulin especially. And it's got a very valuable upgrade too. Two additional damage, which isn't that much, but one additional status turn is really huge. Again, each turn being between 3 and 5 block, you can estimate. So it's a, a very significant numerical upgrade, one that I, I rate on a similar tier to the Bash upgrade, which is a fairly good upgrade in the early game for your Ironclad. That also provides plus two damage and one additional turn of status. So if you have a clothesline, which I do recommend you take in the first few uh, rewards, then upgrade it around the same time that you would upgrade your Bash. And it'll serve you quite well, especially against the uh, the Guardian, and especially against Legavulin and Gremlin Knob. You'll really appreciate this uh, this card and its upgrade. Flex. This one's a bit difficult to, to make work. Flex gives you temporary strength for zero cost, which is really nice. Something, something to note about Flex is that it's a highly unusual zero cost ironclad card. There aren't very many of these, and that does make them valuable if you can get your hands on some card draw. Or if you have pretty good density with a uh, density of attacks in your deck, excuse me. If you have good attack density, then you're more likely to draw flex alongside many other attacks in hand. So if you are on floor three or so, and you've added, say, a couple of attacks, an iron wave, a thunderclap, a sword boomerang, then a flex can be a pretty good addition. The upgrade on flex doubles the effect of the card, plus two additional strength, and that's a very, very good upgrade. Overall, I give flex, uh, don't give a high priority to the taking of it, but if you do have a flex, do upgrade. Havoc. This one's a little bit odd. <laughs> I like to think of Havoc as an Act 2 and 3 card, but it's really not one that I recommend in Act 1. It plays the top card of your draw pile and exhausts it and does so without spending the energy cost. So Havoc can be a very good card if you have other expensive cards in your deck, or if you can manipulate whatever the top card of your draw pile is with like Headbutt or Warcry. But on its own, just added to the starting deck, Havoc is not a significant improvement. It does have an upgrade to make it zero cost, which can be quite valuable and, and is something of note. But as, as is in Act 1, I really don't recommend Havoc. Headbutt is a card that goes well with Havoc, uh, and is one that I recommend much more strongly right away. Havoc, Headbutt deals 9, or upgraded 12 damage, and lets you put a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile. I find this card super valuable in Act 1, because your deck usually consists of your 10 starter cards, and then 1 or 2 upgraded cards. Headbutt allows you to take that singular upgraded card that you have and put it back on top to play it twice in one combat, which you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. In addition to that, it's great frontloader damage itself. So this is a very good Act 1 card, and I find that the putting a card back on top of your draw pile is a really useful effect throughout the entire game. Do take this against pretty much all threats. Being able to headbutt a, a defend against Guardian or another damage card against Slime Boss is great, but the upgrade's not too valuable at only plus 3 damage on a single target attack. Heavy Blade is one I struggle to recommend in the early game. It's 14 damage, and scales multiple times with Strength. Now, if you've already got Strength right at the start of Act 1, then more power to you. But Heavy Blade's problem has always been that it's 2 cost and deals relatively low. 14 is not a great deal compared to, say, Clothesline, which is also applying Weaken. 
um, Heavy Blade really just doesn't scale that well. Doesn't do enough immediate damage to justify the price point. And even worse, the upgrade to this card does not improve the damage guaranteed, only improving the additional strength scaling. So you, you really need three or so points of strength before Heavy Blade is even worth thinking about, uh, and even more than that before you want to try upgrading it. So I don't recommend Heavy Blade in Act 1, and I don't recommend upgrading it either. Iron Wave's a fun little one. This is kind of a strike and a defend stapled together. Five block, five damage, one energy. Pretty efficient overall. Ten, you know, combined block and damage for a pretty low price. But I find that this card often fails to scale well into the later game. This Ironclad really cannot scale the block on this card very well. Not very many ways for Ironclad to get dexterity. And... While Ironclad can scale the damage with strength, there are so many other better cards to apply your strength to. That said, the efficiency of Iron Wave in the early game can make it a attractive pick, especially going into Hexaghost, where you need a little bit of block each turn, or the Guardian, where you need block every turn. I would give this a, a low priority in Act 1 picks. It, it's better than nothing, it's better than not adding a card to your starting deck, but it's not as good as many of the other common attacks in Ironclad's pool, like Headbutt or Pummel Strike. If you do take an Iron Wave or end up with one, the upgrade, however, is very good. Plus two block and plus two damage is a better bang for your upgrade buck than most of the other upgrades you can find for Ironclad commons. So if you do take one, do upgrade it, and you'll find it performs pretty well. Perfected Strike is... <laughs> might be my favorite of the Ironclad commons. For two energy, it's a two energy attack, it deals six damage and then two additional damage for any card with Strike in the text. That's all of your starting strikes, that's all of the other Ironclad cards that say Strike, like Pummel Strike, like Wild Strike, and it includes the Perfected Strike itself. So if you see this on floor one, then it's going to deal 18 damage. Six damage plus six strikes, the five surge strikes and the perfected strike itself. The upgrade is then three additional damage, or rather one additional damage per strike, so going from two to three. Again, with the starter deck conditions, that means it's a plus six damage upgrade. By the standard of ironclad two cost attacks, perfected strike is a little bit short compared to, say, Carnage, which is 20 and then 28 upgraded. But it's almost as good, and if you get more than the starting amount of strikes in your deck, then this can scale even better beyond. The first perfected strike is an acceptable take. If, like, if, if, if this is the only damage option you're presented on floor one, then by all means go for it. You want to get some big hits into the deck for Act 1. But know that you do not need to continue to add strikes constantly from that point. Uh, and it's okay if it's just a 20 damage card for a while that you even think about taking out later. That said, if you find more perfected strikes and upgrade them, or more other strike cards, and upgrade all of your perfected strikes, this card can hit for 50, 60 damage, and, uh, and really slap in the late game. But as an Act 1 card, it does the job pretty well. Take it, upgrade it, and you'd be surprised at how much work it can do. Pommel Strike. I think this is might be one of the best Ironclad commons. Or certainly one of the ones I'm happiest to see in the start of Act 1. 9 damage for 1 energy, and it draws a card for a little bit of cycling. It's great immediate damage, just as good as Headbutt, and you'll really appreciate that card draw against the Slime Boss and against the Hexaghost in particular, as well as, of course, all the other Act 1 enemies that add status cards. A little bit of card draw goes a long way. And Pommel Strike has the distinction of increasing that card draw with an upgrade. Upgrade on Pommel Strike is one more damage and one more card draw, which makes it, by my own standards, a premium upgrade. Most other cards that increase the amount of card draw that they draw when they upgrade. Most other upgrades that increase card draw, excuse me, give you only one additional card and no other numeric effect, but Pummel Strike is one damage and one card, so compared to like everything else that's just plus one card drawn on the upgrade, and that's a better upgrade 
than all of those. Pummel Strike has a very good upgrade, so if you take it, do do consider upgrading this, even if that upgrade is in Act 2 or Act 3 for the one more card. And do take this in Act 1 against most threats. I think it's a, a great early add. Shrug is in the same category, pretty much, except it's block instead of uh, damage in addition to the card draw. Very, very good against the Guardian if you're fighting that boss at the end of Act 1, and you'll appreciate the card draw again against Hexaghost and Slime Boss as well. The upgrade on Shrug is plus 3 block, and that's a beautiful card. Upgraded Shrugs can be a endgame block solution for the Ironclad, so you'll appreciate taking them and you'll appreciate the upgrade investment if you can afford it. Definitely take, definitely consider upgrades on this one. Sword Boomerang is kind of cool. Does random damage, or damage to random targets, multiple times. This is a great strength scaling card for the Ironclad, since the strength that you have is applied either three or on the upgrade four times. The random targeted nature of this card is definitely a disadvantage in Act 1. We talked about why Cleave is valuable for being AoE, while Sword Boomerang is invaluable because that random targeting can really mess with you in multi-enemy fights, which are prevalent in the act. That said, if you have a couple points of strength already, you'll find that this is a really good way to deal damage to big single targets like Legavulin, Gremlin Knob, or Hexaghost. So if you have strength, do take this, and do consider the upgrade. The one more hit is at minimum 3 damage, but you know if you're having strength already, that's going to be a much, much more, you know, 4, 5, or 6. So, low priority on the taking for Sword Boomerang, but do upgrade if if you have strength. Thunderclap, another common AoE card, and valuable for that. Thunderclap doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but the one turn of Vulnerable that it applies can pair really well with other area of effect cards. And simply for being one cost vulnerable, Thunderclap is really, really valuable to Ironclad in the early game. Paying two energy for Bash is pretty difficult to justify much of the time, and makes it impossible to do alongside other big hits. So I particularly like taking a Thunderclap in the early game if you already have a two-cost attack that you want to be able to play with Vulnerable Down, like Perfected Strike, for example. And you can even play it alongside the Bash to get three turns of Vuln. So Thunderclap is a really nice way to kind of round out your Vulnerable uptime. And it has a very, very valuable upgrade. Three additional damage to all enemies makes it a from a just vulnerable card to kind of a front-loaded AoE damage card. Seven is a lot more than four, as it turns out. And this can really help with the upgrade in, in getting the health reduced on multiple enemies like the Gremlins or the Slime Gang. Pairs extremely well with Cleave, too. Down to the final four here, True Grit, one of my favorite ironclad commons, lets you exhaust a card, which is all sorts of valuable. Exhausting your strikes or defends can allow you to draw your upgraded cards more frequently. Exhausting enemies' status cards allows you to not have to draw those again. If you have curse cards, you can exhaust those. By default, True Grit is 7 block and exhausts a card at random, and that's a pretty good deal. 7 block for 1 energy is better than most of the common cards in the ironclad pool. That random exhaust does not is not a big of a deal as you might think, since if you have cards you don't want exhausted, you can simply play them before you play the True Grit. True Grit will definitely benefit your starting deck um, just by being added in Act 1. You don't need to get the upgrade, but the upgrade is quite valuable because it gives you two more block and lets you target where that exhaust is. So if you need to remove specific cards, that's when the True Grit upgrade becomes valuable. But this is still a do take, uh, at least if you're able to beat Gremlin Knob already. You do need some damage cards for the elites. Uh, but this will serve you really well in the Lagavulin fight. This will serve you pretty well in the Guardian fight and it'll serve you really well against uh, Hexaghost and Slime Boss as well, being able to exhaust statuses for you. So I see this as more of a take in the later half of Act 1 rather than the first half of Act 1 kind of card, and consider upgrading maybe in Act 2. But a really good way to start the exhaust synergies on Ironclad. Windstrike. Nice little simple card. Hits twice for 5 damage. 
and the upgrade is pretty good on this. Plus 4 damage, 2 damage per hit. Twin Strike scales multiple times with Strength, which makes it a great pickup if you already have a Flex or an Inflame or some other source of Strength. And what I really like about Twin Strike is that it kind of sits in a happy medium between Sword Boomerang, which scales really well for one energy but is randomly targeted, and Heavy Blade, which scales pretty well but has two energy cost um, and doesn't do that much damage immediately. Twin Strike is a great card that allows you to play it without any strength for solid damage to pick off a low health enemy, or to add strength and vulnerable to this and make it a hard-hitting card in the late game. It's just kind of that Goldilocks strength card. So I, I really like a Twin Strike is one of my first few picks. Uh, I really appreciate the, that you can choose the damage over uh, Sword Boomerang, choose where it goes. And I appreciate the overall energy efficiency of it, so I'm always happy to take it, and it's a very good upgrade again. Warcry! Again, one of the few cards that does not meaningfully improve your starting deck. This does not uh, give you any ability to block or deal damage that you wouldn't be otherwise. What Warcry is, is card manipulation. You draw a card, and then you put a card from your hand on top of your draw pile. This is useful when you want to play one of the cards in your hand next turn, not this turn. And Warcry allows you to set that up. You can also use this in conjunction with Havoc to set up a free card play, or you can use it with, um, like, Fire Breathing to put, a, to put status cards back on top of your deck. But just adding this to the starting deck is not a very significant improvement. And very concerningly, this Warcry will make the Gremlin Knob personally upset with you if you play it in front of him. So please remain quiet while fighting the Gremlin Knob, and don't take Warcry, at least not in Act 1. Now, if you've got Exhaust Synergies later in the game, or if you're being offered it upgraded for free and it draws one more card, then it's a lot better. And if you do end up with a unupgraded Warcry, then that upgrade for plus one card drawn is pretty good. So don't take, but do consider upgrading. Another one of those weird little cards. Last, but I think not least, is Wild Strike, another one of Ironclad's damage commons, and of the damage commons, this one does the most. 12 damage or 17 upgraded makes Wild Strike pack a real wallop. But that comes with the downside of putting a wound into the draw pile. You can think of Wild Strike as costing one energy and two card draws to play. Although a lot of the times you're able to end the fight simply by playing the Wild Strike, and then the wound won't matter. And that's where it can really shine. If, if you just simply kill your opponent with this card, there's no downside to it. I often struggle to personally make these wounds work. Ironclad has a number of ways to scale around status cards, but I don't know. The fact that it goes into the draw pile and you have to draw it quite quickly always made it a, a, a tough sell for me. That said, you'll find the hugely immediate damage of this card extremely useful against the slime boss, against the Grumlin Ob, and against most of the shorter combats of Act 1. So I do recommend taking this and trying it out. You should see if you like it, because the, the sheer number on this card is, is worth giving it a consideration for. And if you do take it, do upgrade it, because that plus 5 is really enormous. 25 damage with Vulnerable, and it can be played in the same turn as Bash. So it's, it's got a, a damage that you really have to respect. Which makes it great in the early game. So those are the 20 Ironclad cards. I think most of these make good additions to the starter deck. I gave you a few to avoid. If you like this video, be sure to uh, drop me a like below. And let me know in the comments which Ironclad common do you like to see the most on Floor 1? Which of these are you most excited? To always add to your starting deck. I think for me it's got to be shrug it off probably, but I'm also always happy with a uh, with a pommel strike. Alrighty buddy, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the ironclad common cards. Toodaloo. Thanks for watching.